Now, before moving on to the detailed study of hot cathode ray tube, what do you think should be the factors which should affect the emission of electrons from a metal when it is heated up? See, these are the factors. First of all, the nature of metal. Not every particular metal is capable of emitting electrons at same particular temperature. Why so? I have given you, I just gave you a sheet that cesium uh, requires very less amount of energy whereas uh, some other material, what was that? Tungsten. That required huge amount of energy. So variation in metal because of their intrinsic properties, in, intrinsic strong bonding and variation in energy levels which are required by electrons to jump from one state to another. That is the requisite. So that is why the nature of material, nature of metal. That is the first important point. Then the temperature of metal obviously. If in that experiment 2000 degrees Celsius was attained for the tungsten filament, it does not uh, is uh, it is not important that it can work in the same way at 1500 degrees Celsius, right? So, temperature of metal. Lastly, the surface area of metal. This is very important point because suppose I take the tungsten filament very thin, thin uh, wire and in one case I am taking a bigger or thicker wire. So, the more the surface area of the outer part, more will be the emission of electrons. So, surface area of the metal. These three are the factors. And on the basis of accumulation of all the facts which you have read about electron emission and the factors affecting electron emission, the construction of hot cathode ray tube was possible. So what is basically cathode ray tube? It is simply an electron emission gun, right? But the uh, further application of cathode ray tube is helpful for us in many, many, many ways. So first we'll, we are going to study hot uh, CRT, basically we call it CRT that is cathode ray tube. So, we will start with the principle. It makes use of the following three processes which are thermionic emission. We know what is thermionic? It is the emission of electrons. Uh, that is why I am repeating again and again because you should know this definition by heart by this time. So, the thermionic emission is the emission of electrons from metal surface when heat energy is imparted to it. That was the first principle. Second one is deflection of electron beam by electric and magnetic field. Now, I will not proceed from this point unless I will explain you clearly what is and how is deflection of electron from electric and magnetic field possible. I will explain it to you in very simple ways. Number one, deflection. We are talking about deflection of electrons. Okay, let me write it first of all. Deflection of what? Electrons from electric fields and here I will explain deflection from magnetic fields. Okay. After once we are done with this, then we will proceed to the CRT. Now, we know that electrons are negatively charged particles. That means, suppose there is this electron being coming straight from this point and it has to pass a region of two plates where there is some potential difference applied across these plates or simply this plate has been given positive charge and this plate has been given negative charge. So, what will happen to the direction of flow of electrons? Electrons are negatively charged particles that means they have a tendency to get attracted towards the positive part whereas they also have a tendency to get repelled by a similar charge which is negative charge. So, this beam in the absence of in the absence of the charge provided on the plates would have gone straight but due to the presence of charges on the plate, it is going to uh, get attracted towards the positive point and repelled by the negative point. So, the path gets curved, right? So, at any point on the curve, if you want to know what exactly is the direction of flow of electrons, you will have to draw a tangent at that point and that tangent is going to show you the exact direction of flow of electrons. So, this is how electrons deflect in the electric fields. Now, for magnetic field, how do we represent magnetic first of all? Magnetic field because for electric field it was very simple for me to <coughs> represent that is I wrote positive charges and negative charges and I know that electric fields are positive and negative from positive to negative. But for magnetic field there must be some way to represent magnetic field. Yes there are that is cross and dots. What are crosses? When magnetic lines exactly like electric lines of force there are magnetic lines of force okay so again these are also imaginary lines but they just are used to show or to represent that magnetic lines exist and they are in this order at this portion so suppose this is magnetic lines of force region and these magnetic lines are vertically inwards into the plane so if i have to represent a magnetic field region where the lines are coming out of the plane I would have represented those lines with dots. So that is why dots and crosses are used. Dots for 
coming vertically outwards crosses are going vertically or normally inwards why we do so with dots and cross have you seen a bow when you shoot a bow the arrow arrow from the front when it is coming towards you you can only see a dot because it is coming towards you but when it is going away from you you will see the back end cross that is why when it is going away it is cross coming towards this is dot okay that was the logic now when an electron or a charged particles enter any charged particle i let me represent the charged particle by q if it enters a region of magnetic field it gets deflected because of some force which is acting on this charged particle and this force has a direction which is given by fleming's left hand rule which is force field current you are not supposed to go into detail at this moment you just listen what i'm saying the charged particle when it is put up in our region of magnetic field will experience a force which is given by fleming's left hand rule that is force field current that means if you place the thumb first finger middle finger of your left hand in three mutually perpendicular directions such that first finger represents field and this finger represents the direction of flow of charge then thumb will give you the direction of force so in this picture i have this as the first finger as a direction of magnetic field and middle finger as a direction of flow of charge then thumb is giving me the direction of force which is being which is being what it is being exerted on this particular charge so this represents me that the charge is experience a force in upward direction so that means it will move it it is it is experiencing a force in upward direction that means it will move somewhere in this direction but again by this law it will start moving in upward direction and so on so basically charged particle undergoes a circular path in magnetic field this is how it follows so this is how charged particles deflect in electric and magnetic field so this was our second principle now the third one is fluorescence produced by the electron beam on a fluorescent screen now what is fluorescence some materials which are called fluorescent materials exhibit a property or phenomena called fluorescence that is they emit light when when something strikes on it or some particle strike on it uh, you can also relate it with the phenomena of scintillation scintillation is like very tiny flash of camera very tiny flash so scintillation is that thing fluorescence is emission of light so this screen was painted by some fluorescent material from inside so that whenever electrons strike because we are going to change the direction of electrons using these two phenomena so wherever electron is striking we are going to see the glowing pattern and then we can we can make the Uh, patterns we can make the readings according to wherever electrons are following so these three principles were combined together to produce crt now the construction it consists of long hollow evacuated glass tube of mainly three regions three parts or three main components which is one electron gun deflection system and fluorescent screen so electron gun is basically thermionic emission deflecting system is the deflection of electrons and lastly the fluorescent screen same way so three principles three working parts this much part is this much part is electron gun this much part is deflection system where you can apply electric and magnetic field and this one is the fluorescent screen now the uses is to check the waveform of varying electrical signal to measure short time intervals it is used in television as picture tube to investigate waveform of an unknown alternating potential by applying it to the y plates of known potential so we can do a lot of things with crt now this is the detailed diagram of a uh, this um, electron emission part which is this one the electron gun okay so in electron gun cathode this one's cathode and heater so electrons are emerging out randomly from the grid but after passing through grid they are following a some pattern because of these voltages so that is how see these electrons were streamlined in one direction but they were ejecting out in various directions so that is why it is called electron gun because it is made to do to make to do or to make electrons to do what they are made to do right so this was a little jumble of words basically i just wanted to say that electrons are supposed to <coughs> go in a focused pattern and this is what electron gun is doing now deflection of electrons in uniform electric field i've already explained you how this electrons behave in electric and magnetic fields and lastly the fluorescent screen this is the electron gun which is being directed on this so wherever the electrons strike it will produce a 
fluorescence the light so that is the spot and that is what we can predict and we can see and we can make readings okay now why do we study cathode ray tube because of its many many usage but the most important uses are first of all picture tube in television then radar system to detect enemy aircraft because if this is a mountain there is this radar here okay this is the world's baddest drawing of a radar but uh, radar but let's assume it is a radar okay now it is suppose this is an enemy aircraft okay this is also uh, uh, another bad drawing so when the rays which are getting reflected from the aircraft and which are coming back to the radar this is something which radar has already understood but how radar can show it to us radar shows us you might have seen it in televisions that there is this screen moving this rod or this uh, thing moving which shows us suppose aircraft is here so it gives us a signal here when the aircraft is here it gives us a signal here it is simply fluorescence tube nothing else fluorescence screen okay then to measure voltage of current the drop across resistance is measured to study waveforms and measurement of frequency and phase angle these are just few uses of crt otherwise otherwise there are many many other uses of crt as well so this concludes our chapter we'll move on to the next part of the chapter that is radioactivity